Hello YouTube, this is my review on Canon M50, coming up. So you recently noticed that I bought a Canon mirrorless camera, Canon EOS M50. Now I don't really want to bore you with all the technical specification, but it's worth mentioning these kind of things about the Canon M50. It is the first Canon consumer grade mirrorless 4K camera and it has an APS-C sensor so that means it has a 1.6 uh, crop factor as well but the sensor itself is 24.1 megapixels and it has the newest Canon Digic 8 processor so that means it has more power than all the other generations for example now it uses a new RAW format called CR3 this is a very low file size compared to what we used to have in Canon and have more information as well because of this Digic 8 processor it has more power in order to compress this all the information into smaller files and worth mentioning it has Wi-Fi Bluetooth and NFC it allows your camera to connect directly through Wi-Fi Bluetooth or NFC to your phone and using the Canon connect app you can connect to your phone directly from the camera and without bothering about putting your SD card into a computer and transferring to the laptop and anything. So you directly can see all the photos from your phone using Bluetooth or Wi-Fi inbuilt into the camera. One other feature is that it has an external microphone jack. So now I'm using the Rode microphone to record this video and it allows you to plug any type of an ex external microphone could it be a wireless one or a, a set of microphones you can use that microphone jack to do that and also it has an HDMI port which allows you to plug a different screen to the camera or else you can use the port to do a live streaming of your videos uh, to YouTube or any other streaming mean and this also has a micro USB port but I don't know why they use micro USB instead of USB-C but anyway I tried to use it with my Mac but it didn't work because the EOS utility software for Mac OS for some reason it doesn't work I'm not sure about the Windows machines or Linux machines but for Mac OS it doesn't work so now I'm using the typical mode of plugging the SD card into my computer in case I want to transfer the files to my computer or else I simply uh, look at my photos using my phone. So the screen on the camera is touch sensitive and that means you can do all the functionalities that you're using with the buttons using the screen itself and also you can completely rotate the screen in a way that you can see yourself while you are filming and that's what I'm doing now because there is no one who would like to record me. You should also know that it has a viewfinder compared to other Canon mirrorless series. This has a viewfinder but it's an electronic viewfinder. It means that it only has an LCD screen at the way you put your eye. Not a, an optical viewfinder like other DSLR cameras because it doesn't have the capability of showing the image as it's seen through the lens because it anyway should uh, pitch into the sensor unlike DSLRs. Talking about battery life, it's also directly connected to the battery life as well because either way you are using a screen, could it be the touch screen of the back or the viewfinder, still it needs power to keep the life view of either of these screens so it takes a lot of battery. And also the battery is very small, it's around 800 milliamp hours. According to the specification, it can only shoot around 235 uh, shots in either using um, viewfinder or the screen but surprisingly the battery life drastically lowers if you are using the inbuilt flash so i've been using it for uh, some low light indoor photography and i couldn't even reach 50 shots it just done it doesn't work so if you are planning to do some indoor photography with flash so if you're planning to do some indoor photography with flashes make sure that you have an external flash otherwise your battery will drain another sp special feature of this camera is you can change the focus while you are looking into the electronic viewfinder the focus can be changed using the touch screen and it's a very cool feature because you don't want to take your eye and put uh, the focus point separately 
and also it doesn't have a, a focus point a rotator in the in the control panel as well so it will be very easy for you to control the uh, focus points using the touch itself one other thing to notice is that it also support manual focus of course and it has a cool feature called manual focus peak it allows you to see what's in focus while you are filming it will put a red or yellow texture on top of the objects which are on a focus so i will show you a sample so this is how it looks when you use the manual focus peak feature and it will be very useful if you are new new to photography or even you're an expert and you want to check which is in focus and which is not so canon uses the digic 8 processor to do these kind of cool features and allows you to shoot the best photos and another thing the burst mode it can go up to 10 frames per second while you are shooting in burst mode and it's very helpful when you are shooting some sports photography or dynamic uh, scenarios like maybe wildlife another thing this canon offers out of the box some filters that you can use on top of your photos and also your videos so i don't personally use them because otherwise you will lose all the information but it's also a cool feature to try it out but you also can check how the picture changes according to the filters that you are putting in and yeah it doesn't hurt to try it out but i don't personally use it now let's talk about the videos it has the capability of shooting 4k 30 frames per second videos but now i'm using 1080p because it's more than enough for youtube content and also you should notice this a huge crop factor when you are shooting 4k everybody's talking about it let's see how it exactly looks so now i'm shooting in 4k i didn't move this i only changed the settings of my camera to shoot 4k i'm only sitting right in front of the camera just afar from my length of my hand and you can see how much of a crop factor is it has compared to 1080 it has a huge crop factor so maybe for a vlog i don't know if it's a problem but make sure that it does not have the dual pixel autofocus functionality when you are shooting in 4k yes still it tracks my face but sometimes you see it, it loses because for some reason canon did not put dual pixel autofocus in 4k i don't know why but 1080p is more than enough let's switch back to 1080p so now you can see all this background which you couldn't see in the 4k uh, frame so i would stick to 1080p if you are vlogging or even doing youtube videos like this i think 1080p would be enough there is another feature for 720p but i don't know who shoots in 720p anymore it supports slow motion in 120 frames per second i tried a little bit of scenarios to capture in slow motion yes the quality is not that good as 1080p because it's 720p but the results are promising it does shoot slow motion natively so it does a good job compared to the, the crappy mobile phone cameras so if you want to shoot while you are walking you can use either a lens which in built has the image stabilization capability or you can use a gimbal unfortunately i don't have either so now i'm shooting with 22 mm efm lens which does not really have uh, inbuilt image stabilization but 18 to 55 mm lens has the inbuilt uh, image stabilization capability so you can try it out or invest in a good gimbal if you are into videography so another thing that many people talk about is the low light performance i was trying to take some photos around six o'clock because it's winter here and it's not that light in Germany but I, I can say it's not that bad it's not that bad I mean it's not the best because this only has around 65,000 ISO if I'm correct let me check no it only has from 100 to 25,600 ISO so it doesn't really do a good job in low light performance as you would expect but surprisingly it's not bad either so if you have a tripod you can try some stills with long exposure 
and yeah you can get some good results so see these pictures uh, that I tried I couldn't try the videos but I think it will be almost the same so these photos I took using a both using a tripod or without a tripod so you can see a difference yes because with the lower range of ISO you can't really do much and the low light performance of this camera it's not bad it's not the best but I would say it's satisfactory for the price that you are getting deal with it and this has the inbuilt capability to shoot time-lapse videos how cool is that I mean you can use a software to use the existing videos to make a time-lapse lapse time lapse but how cool is that the Canon provides itself so I shot some time-lapse videos and it's okay and surprisingly well uh, better than I expected and all these videos were unedited so no filters no fine-tuning or anything just pure out of the camera and you can also shoot scenes I never tried it because I don't know I don't really use videography unless that I'm talking to you but you can use these scenes filters when you are using uh, your camera to, to shoot something uh, either could be people sports I don't know photo wildlife photography for daily videos that for your vlogs and some random videos you take to shoot people in a photographic way you can try these scenes and just let me know in the comments below if you have ever tried the scenes and what do you think about it that's pretty much it I mean there are tons of videos in YouTube talking about how bad the Canon M50 is and how good the Canon M50 is my verdict is it's not the best camera out there if you're coming from a DSLR to mirrorless there is a huge change not just with it being mirrorless but the weight the functionalities the lenses it's completely different because if you ever notice this use EFM lenses that means you cannot directly use the existing lenses you had for previous Canon cameras with this camera unless you can use an adapter either from Canon or another third-party vendor that you can simply plug it into the camera and mount all your old lenses on top of the lens mount and theoretically it should work well but I never tried it because I got only EFM lenses because I never really owned a Canon camera before so I settled with EFM and trust me the lenses are expensive so maybe if you already have a Canon camera and with some lenses if you want to move to mirrorless I highly recommend you to buy a lens mount first then you can try this lens on the M50 and see how well it, it performs other than that if you are just entering the domain of photography or videography and you just want a small camera that you can carry all around with you I think Canon M50 is the best that you can get for now there are a lot of other cameras that you can use the mirrorless cameras which is highly competitive with the Canon M50 for example uh, a 6400 but still it lacks some of the features which has on Canon and also vice versa I'm a kind of a, a Canon fan so I decided to go with Canon but it's your choice I explained all the information technical information and my personal opinion on that but it's your choice if you want to go to a mirrorless camera and whether to buy a Sony one or even Panasonic or a Canon one let me know in the comment section below what do you think of this camera and if you ever had to buy a mirrorless camera would you buy it I keep all the links in the description for the camera for the lenses for the microphone that I'm using even these studio lights that I'm using which doesn't really seems to do a better job but still I will keep the links in the description below let me know your thoughts about the Canon M50 until then 